Let's look at an optimization problem. So imagine that the cost to operate a train for one hour in dollars is 480 plus v squared over 4, where v is the speed. So as you increase the speed, you have to pay for fewer hours, but the cost for each hour is higher. So what's the speed that gives you the lowest cost for a 360 mile trip? The hard part, the fun part, the interesting part, the important part, is before the calculus where we're going to write an equation for the quantity to be optimized. This is the hard part because this can't be memorized as a sequence of steps. Um, it could be, it's gonna be different every time depending on what the problem is. All right, so the quantity that we're trying to optimize is cost. We're trying to keep the cost low. So let's write an equation for the cost and then we'll write a better equation and then we'll write a better equation until we have something that we can use calculus on. So my first equation for the cost is that it's going to be the number of hours times the cost per hour. Okay, good start. Let's let t equal hours. So now we have the cost is t times the cost per hour. Okay, but we can say a little bit more about the cost per hour. We're given that in the problem, it's 480 plus v squared over four. All right, this is progress, but there's an issue. There are two variables in this, t and v. We want to rewrite this equation as a function of just one variable so that we can use some calculus on it. So we have cost is t times 480 plus v squared over 4. But this has two variables. Um, we need to rewrite this expression with just t or just v as the variable we'll need to use this fact, that distance equals speed times time. And the distance that we're going to travel is 360 miles. That equals the speed times the time. So how is this useful? We can solve for t and get t equals v over 360, or we can solve for v and get v equals 360 over t. These equations will allow us to substitute into our original equation to get it rewritten as a function of just one variable. I'll use the fact that v can be written as 360 over t to rewrite our equation with only with t as the only variable. So I get cost equals t 480 plus well, dividing by four is the same as multiplying by one fourth. So that's one fourth V squared. And what goes in for V? 360 over T. All right, this is an improvement. Now I have C of T as the cost as a function of just one variable time. If I distribute this T, I get 480 T plus one fourth times 360 squared, and then when we distribute this t, it'll cancel one of the t's in the denominator here. So times 1 over t. All right, um, this is better because now we can do calculus on this equation because it's an equation with just one variable. Um, to take the derivative, it'll be helpful for me to rewrite 1 over t as t to the negative 1 to make it more obvious how to use the power rule, how to apply the power rule in this case. All right, so then C prime of T will be 480. Then we have this constant, the minus sign comes down, times T to the negative two. So C prime of T equals 480 minus 
Three sixty squared over four times one over t squared. All right. So when we want to maximize or minimize, we look for critical points. All right, so there are two questions we ask about C prime to um, look for critical points. So the two questions are, where is C prime undefined? So I see that there's a, there's a T in the denominator, so it's undefined. Oops. So it's undefined at t equals zero, um, but at time equals zero, we won't have the train won't have gone anywhere. So even though this makes sense algebraically, we'll ignore it because it doesn't address the actual moving train question. The other question we ask is, where is c prime equal to zero? So we set pre c prime equal to zero, and then we try to solve for t using algebra. All right, um, first thing, let's move this whole thing to the other side. So then I've got 480 equals 360 squared over 4 times 1 over t squared by adding this whole thing to both sides. Then we'll um, divide both sides by this constant. So we'll get 480. So multiply by the reciprocal times 4 over 360 squared equals 1 over t squared. Then take the reciprocal on both sides. t squared equals 360 squared over 4 times 480 in the denominator. And then finally take the square root on both sides. All right, so plus or minus the square root of this whole crazy thing. All right, so algebraically, algebraically it makes sense that we could have either plus, that t could be plus or minus and satisfy this. because we're interested in a train moving forward in time, not backwards in time. And this is approximately um, 8.2 hours. Um, do you use the approximation symbol when you're approximating a rounding? I mean, I'm not going to take off points if you write equals, but it'll make me twitch a little bit. Um, all right, um, we're not done. Why not? Um, we found that the time is 8.2 hours, but that's not what the question was asking. The original question was, um, what's the speed? Um, not what's the best time, but these things are related. We know that 360 equals the time, 8.2, times the speed, which is written as v in this case. So we can just divide both sides by 8.2 and get the velocity is approximately 43.9 miles per hour. First thing we had to do was to write an equation for the quantity to be optimized. Sometimes you're trying to make something as small as possible, like cost. Sometimes you're trying to make something as big as possible. But here we're trying to optimize cost. So I start simple. Just basic, just write down the idea of the thing. So the cost to run something for number of hours is the number of hours times the cost per hour. We decided to let t represent time in hours. So the cost is t times, and we have this formula for the cost to run it for one hour, 480 plus v squared over 4. But this doesn't work because it has two variables. 
we'll have to use the relationship d the distance equals speed times time. So that distance that we're traveling in this problem is 360 and it equals v times t. So if I can solve this for v or I can solve it for t and get an equation with just one variable, I'll solve it for v. So v equals 360 over t. This lets us rewrite our equation as a function of just one variable, c of t. So we've got t 480 plus 1 fourth. This expression squared 360 over t. This is one of those times where it's easier to simplify first. So we can simplify that a little bit as 480t. We're distributing this t. And then plus 360 squared over 4. And then when we multiply, we hit, this will give us two t's in the denominator. Then we multiply by t, we'll get one t in the denominator. OK, so times 1 over t. Then we, then we took the derivative of this thing. Take the derivative. And look for maxes and mins using our usual strategy. So we're using the strategy from 4.1, looking for critical points.